Dear Swallow community, over the last month I've had a number of conversations with parents about grades and grading practices. It has also come up in a couple of committees that we have going on at Swallow. If you were like me, most of us experienced grading based off a percentage and that percentage told us what letter grade we were going to get. There was also that slide thingamabob where you could put the number of problems and it told you your percentage and grade. As education in Wisconsin and the country gets more defined, which I think will ultimately make our education system stronger and better able to meet the needs of all learners, the discussion on grading practices has also really started to gain legs. There are a number of local surrounding districts that are looking at how they show student growth, and we have staff having those same conversations here at Swallow. Also, as we move into a new statewide assessment and reporting system, students, schools, teachers, and even principals will begin to be measured more on a growth model of student achievement. What does that mean for us here at Swallow? I don't think we know yet, and it is not a discussion that can take place only within our walls as educators. It needs to include the greater population of our school system. I want to take a moment to draw your attention to an article that was written one year ago this month by Susan Brokart and was found in the publication Educational Leadership. She provides these four points to begin a conversation about grading. It might be worth starting that conversation internally with oneself to begin to wrap our own thinking around this enormous white elephant that is getting closer to our current system. They read, grades should reflect achievement of intended learning outcomes, whether the school is using a conventional, subject-based report card or a report card that represents these intended learning outcomes as standards. The primary audiences for these messages conveyed in grades are students and their parents. Grading policies should aim to give them useful, timely, actionable information. Teachers, administrators, and other educators are secondary audiences. Grades should reflect the particular student's individual achievement. Growth and cooperative skills are important, but they should be reflected elsewhere, not in an individual's academic grade. Grading policies should be set to support student motivation to learn. A student should never reach a place where there is no point in doing any more work because failure is inevitable. For me, these are some big questions to wrap my own thinking around, but I see this as a conversation that will need to play place in our future if for no other reason to recognize the white elephant in the room. Have a great month of November. Take care, Mr. Amplin. And that concludes A Swallow 60.